You guys remember Kiki, right? I want to call Kiki the Dark Magician. She's not. This is not Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, the Dark Mage, the debuff queen of Summoner's War. She does a crazy amount of debuffs, all kinds of random debuffs to the enemies uh, via her passive. Well, I was looking at my favorites, and I found two people on my favorites that got Kiki. And they have been using the crap out of her. So today we're going to take a look at some of their matches. Uh, let's take a brief recap over what Kiki does. She's got the first skill, attack break. They all have this. She's got the second skill, defense break, AoE defense break, uh, just like the water one does. And then we have the third skill, start of pain passive. This is random debuffs on the enemies. Uh, when you get your turn, grants one of the falling harmful effects that the enemies do not have, so can't do the same one they already have. Uh, two turns each on all enemies, decrease attack speed, unrecoverable, increased chance of landing and glancing hit, beneficial effects blocked. In addition, absorbs the target's HP, kind of like a lifesteal, of your max HP up to 10% each for each harmful effect granted on the target when you attack the enemy on your turn. Then we have a Guild War Leader skill, which is irrelevant in RTA. But anyway, let's take a look at her uh, and let's see... Let's see some crazy matches. First match, and one of the things I noticed is he actually likes to pick some of the counters to Kiki in his own team. Like, he'll pick the Water Howl, he'll also pick the Juno sometimes. Things that hard counter Kiki, because the, uh, the amount of harmful effects that, uh, that Kiki does. Juno's just going to heal all of those, Lulu's going to cleanse things. So he's picking those ways so the enemy can't pick them. So that's, that's one of the things that I noticed about that, right? So enemy comes in, he's got the, the Ragdoll passive, right? He's got some glancing hits, Blade Slaughter, and he increased the cool time on, with the Nyx's new uh, skills, he increased the cool time on the, uh, the Water Joker, so he didn't actually revive. Next match, same comp on the, for the most part, on the Kiki side. Uh, and then we have a Gany Hathor Daphnis Oki. I feel like that's a comp that I would have seen a year ago, not necessarily right now. And again, that strip and uh, increased cool times. Where's the new, uh, the new Daphnis? Not Daphnis, Nyx, not Daphnis. The new Daphnis. When you look at Daphnis, you tend to say Daphnis, right? Okay, so then we get some, uh, not really the debuffs he was going for, I'm sure, for the, uh, for the Kiki, right? And you can't choose which debuffs you get. Uh, Hathor gets bombed. Decreased attack age, overwhelmed fire, so that's a... The, the new the new buff for the Daphnis since the last balance patch, for those of you that uh, weren't around for the last balance patch, maybe some returning players, uh, is the uh, heal block. Samoth has the speed break. Nyx uh, will increase the heal strip and increase the cooldowns of things as we've seen. Uh, Gany is Gany. Next match, same basic comp. If it's not broke, don't fix it. He, he switches up the last pick, though. He goes for a Juno sometimes. He goes for Juno sometimes. He goes for Kaki. So he's got the strip into a random uh, random debuffs. Increases the cool time on everyone. Increases the cool time on the Kiki. But she's still her passive's still going to activate, right? So let's see uh, let's see what happens there. Let's see what kind of uh, debuff she has. As long as she gets attack age, she should be fine. So she got a slow there. She got a block beneficial effects, which really doesn't. <laughs> Block beneficial effects again doesn't really matter too much in this comp. So let's uh, let's see here. Strips almost everything except for the Ciara. He's gonna go for the. It looks like he's going for the Kiki first, right? He's gonna Kiki and uh, Ciara are gonna be the enemy's targets. So more debuffs. There we go. Anytime she violent procs, just additional debuffs, right? So just fast violent will is what it's looking like. It is. Let's see some more Kiki debuffs. Remember, it's anything that's not on the enemy already. If the enemy already has the debuff, it's n they're, then they, they're, the game is just going to choose, or RNG is just going to choose a different debuff. So it's just like you can just stack basically every debuff, not every debuff imaginable, but uh, I believe there is a total of six different debuffs that Kiki does. I know you guys are going to try to correct me on what I just said. Six debuffs, right? She's got four on her passive. I know you guys are going to try to correct me and say, she's, oh, it's only four on her passive. And then she's got one on skill one and, and uh, one on skill two as well. She's got the attack power break and the defense break. So there's a total of six um, altogether. So, uh, bans the Nyx so they don't get turn one. However, she resisted. And a revenge proc from Vertiheel. And then a... And that's the whole match. They didn't even want to keep playing. They're like, nope. I don't even want to see what this is uh, what this is going to look like now. That, I feel like... I feel like I would have continued playing the match. Next match, opponent steals his CR first. Going for a fast control comp. 
units, double speed leads, two units that, well, actually, yeah, two units that, that are on Swift. Uh, so brings the Oki Rika instead. Rika and Oki against a whole lot of wind units there on the enemy side. Do they get, they got resisted on the Lulu. Gets the Fire Guardian Angel. Does he get, so that's looking like it might be on, that uh, That Rika might be on violence. Some people do violence, some people do despair on the Rika. So I guess we'll see. Does he get the attack age pushback? He does not get the attack age pushback on two of those units. So the Rika and the Lulu. That's kind of that's kind of nasty that he doesn't get the attack age pushback on that. Because now Rika's resistance. Some people have been stacking a lot of resistance though. Doesn't even get the maybe he's maybe this is just the unluckiest Rika. Because doesn't even get the stun on the skill two that stuns. Right? So a lot of debuffs there. That's what we wanted to see. And the opponent doesn't have any any immunity, so there's nothing really stopping Kiki from doing Kiki things. And more resistance. So, Ciara's not landing the bombs. Rika's not landing the stuns or the sleeps. I mean, she landed her skill three, but uh, yeah, increased cool time's not really going to do anything about the passes, though. It's kind of the situation there. And then a lot, a lot, a lot of stuns, additional damage from the artifacts. And GG, but I mean the enemy didn't have so if if they had a lot of resistance on their units And maybe that's how they play with a lot of resistance on their units um, Where they can kind of prevent themselves from getting uh, stripped and reset and attack age uh, decreased and defense broken and things like that Then Rika can basically Rika does a lot against that team with three wind units and then the, you know the water striker is still the water striker, but um Still does a lot against those three wind units and no immunity. So this one, G3 player, and they actually know exactly how to counter this Kiki, right? So they bring the Juno first. Maybe they've seen, maybe they've fought against them before and they know they're bringing the Kiki. So they bring the Juno and they bring the Veramos as well. Or maybe they were just bringing the Juno because they were like, you know what, let's, uh, Juno counters my Nephthys, let me, uh, let me bring her in, right? So they have two different things that counter the Kiki. Bombs the, uh, bombs the Juno. But there's nothing on Veramos, right? There's nothing on Veramos, so we couldn't turn cycle or anything. Kaki gets an additional turn, kills the Juno. So that's one Kiki counter already down. He's got a glancing hit on the Fire Art Master, and they just gave up after that. Maybe they just figured that Kaki was going to do too much damage. But this wasn't really even a Kiki, uh, Kiki spotlight. This was more of a... Kaki just killed Judo. We got a violent proc spotlight. Next match against a very meta team. They got multiple speed leads. They got multiple strips. They got attack age decrease. They got skill uh, cooldown resets. Uh, they ban the Nyx. Nyx got the resistance leader skill. He also is the unit that is the fastest on their team. Right? So the enemy gets turn one. He uh, strips. He decreases attack age. He CCs. Not everything. But he also increases the cooldown. So this is looking pretty rough. And that's kind of the situation with this team on the enemy side is it's going to look pretty rough because that's the point of it because it's a super OP team right now. We'll see if it gets, uh, we'll see if it gets um, nerfed in the, if any of these units get nerfed in the balance patch coming up after season. But this Verd's doing some, this Verd's doing some damage. The Verd and then the Lulu proc too. Right, so the Lulu proc into cleansing the Verd was definitely helpful for the Verd. Then gets some, uh, does he get another? Well, he healed a little bit with the... Uh, with the Kiki, right? You saw that. So let's see if Verd goes crazy and starts. But between the Verd and the Lulu, I mean, I've I've fought against the Verds and Lulus before. And if you're bringing a control team against, I should say the new people take Verd and Lulu against me. But if you're bringing control teams against the Verd and a Lulu, look at that. They got the, all those debuffs. Um, it's it's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying. Like if you bring just straight damage, damage, it's easy to deal with. But uh, if you're not bringing straight damage, and a lot of times the Verdant the lose, people use mollies and stuff like that against as well. Or other passive units um, in those comps. But yeah, if you're bringing a control team, Verd and Lulu is kind of nasty too. Uh, like, uh, if, if you are fighting against a control team, Verd and Lulu is a really nice uh, counter to that. This next one, I was a totally different player, totally different comp. They're going for a faster, more aggressive one. They also choose the Juno. Enemy chooses a uh, Veramos. And they pick a Wind Demon, right? So they have no uh, no cooldown reset, or no cooldown increase for the Water Joker. Which would be potentially nasty. He had a very fast Ganymede. This is looking almost like a... Well, never, I was going to say a Shield Will Cleave. It's not really a Shield Will Cleave, but... Uh, attack Power Buff, Speed Buff. Gets the Defense Break. 
And then do they get this big nuke damage from the... Well, you know what? They have the demon. They have the wind demon. They don't need to reset anything. They have the wind demon. So this... this uh, Yeah, this joker's not coming back from the dead. Regardless. Right? So then Ganymede comes back from the scroll. And that's basically GG. So this next one, he's going in again with the same first two picks of the Art Master. Goes in with a Leo and Lucifer comp. And the Rocky there, right? So Leo Lucifer is kind of a nasty comp. So like no matter what you, no matter what you ban, there's some kind of attack age increase. They're getting turned one, regardless, because um, of because of the Lucifer uh, Lucifer passive, right? So it does some damage, increases the attack age of the enemy team uh, even more. Kills the Wind Onimusha. That would have been fun to see him because he does extra damage based on the amount of lost HP that he has. Strips everything. Doesn't strip everything. Doesn't strip the uh, the Rocky. So he goes for. Uh, just the skill 2 instead of the skill 3 with the uh, Wind Art Master. So he's trying to pump more damage into the Fire Art Master to kill it. And now that's... Yeah, now that's just so nasty. But there is still the Leo in the scroll, though. So eventually, Leo's gonna... He's, he's gonna have a way to come back, right? And another thing, uh, Leo's an interesting counter to the Fire Art Master because the Fire Art Master does a... Uh, his, his scroll is based on the speed, right? So his scroll is based on his speed. So Leo limits his speed. So, although Leo being off the battlefield, now I think about it, Leo being off the battlefield, he doesn't he doesn't quite nerf him if he, Leo's the one that gets trapped in the scroll. But if Leo's not the one that gets trapped in the scroll, it would nerf the Fire Art Master's scroll because he would have Fire Art Master would have less speed, and the unit on on Leo's side, the Leo player's side, the the opponent of the Fire Art Master. Um, is going to have that unit in the scroll for less duration. Another match, another first two Art Master picks into the Dark... I always want to say Dark Magician. Dark Mage, and he leaves those two last picks for uh, flexible picks. He has a healer, and he also has the Cocky, which is not going to trigger the Ragdoll passive. And also, a Tyrannus Fire Striker. I don't usually see Tyrannus Fire Strikers. Fire Striker goes down immediately, and they concede the match. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you know what? The cocky is actually a counter. Now that I think about it, the cocky is a counter to the fire striker because the cocky is going to have... Fire striker, uh, his passive activates based on his attack power, right? And cocky is going to have a crazy high attack power, not necessarily crit damage. So cocky actually counters both the fire striker and the ragdoll, interestingly enough. First two picks, both art masters. Again, who's surprised? Nobody's surprised. So they go for the water Ryu and the vertiheal into that Fire Art Master, and then wind up banning him anyway, right? So another one with the Fire Ryu, which is the same as the Fire Striker. So we've got a double uh, double Striker team. Stays in human form, because he wants to get that extra attack bar when uh, when the Water Ryu moves, right? So strips, Fire, uh, Fire Ryu starts doing his Fire Ryu things. Oh, and has the attack power break. I mean, that's one way to counter the counter to the Fire Ryu, is to just attack power break the Kaki, right? Makes sense. So, as much as I was saying, like, oh, yeah, that's a counter. It's like, oh, wow. Okay, well, you got a little bit lucky on that uh, not stripping anything. Anything from Fran. Four hits. Nothing. Stripped nothing. It's a god Fran. All right. So, does he still go for Fran or does he start going for... No, he does not. He starts going for the Leo. Okay, I kind of thought he might switch targets. But I was not sure. Goes for some attack age decrease and skill cooldown reset. And then he's going to just wait for the Ryu until last, I guess. So, this way he doesn't have to deal with the Ryu taking extra turns, decreasing attack bar, you know. So, yep. And then kills Fren, and then does a whole bunch of debuffs. Unless Fren uh, resists those two. No, she, did, she, she didn't resist everything, okay. So it's looking like there's some damage on that uh, on that dark mage as well. First two picks aren't masses. We know we know the drill at this point. Okay, so enemy brings a Sierra Gianna Gani, not toxic at all, and an Operon. Okay, so bans the Gianna. So they have no strip, but they still do have the uh, ignored defense. Uh, brings out and bans the Molly on the enemy side, right? Okay, so attack power buff. He also has the, the he, he had full will. So Gani was basically useless with as, how fast he was, right? Did not get a revenge, maybe because this vertiheal, if you if if you notice, he's actually on will. So didn't strip the will on the vertiheal, but that means he's not on full revenge. So that is a thing that people are doing now. 
because that can counter the fire art master putting something in a scroll like if, if the fire art master was going to put the vertiheal in a scroll and then go for his uh, aoe strip then you know vertiheal not on will runes you're going to be able to easily put the vertiheal in the scroll that's why the fire art master is so strong and i think one of the things that people are starting to do is put double revenge and will on vertiheals this way he can still counter and he's not as easy to just trap him in a scroll turn one this way you have to trap something else in the scroll and then you have to do the aoe and vertiheal can still he has two sets of revenge so he can still do that revenge um after that when he when uh, fire Art master does his uh his skill three. So we already know what's going to happen on the left hand side let's take a look at the right hand side has a gani oki lockdown has a water striker very uh control units control units we have another uh aoe strip and bans the poseidon so the real question here is molly going to be able to keep he doesn't get the strip on that he goes for the skill two is molly going to be able to keep the team alive long enough or is this cc team going to keep ccing them over and over and over again right so her passive activates regardless uh, of if she's cooled down or whatever the case is uh, so they get a lot of these debuffs they got the glancing which is pretty nasty for their team right glancing and the speed break and everything and at that point glancing and speed break is pretty nasty for a fast control team that's basically that basically nerfs everything that they're planning to do so that's pretty brutal and there's no way to really cool that down because it's her passive last match first three picks fairly standard for this season uh brings in the chiwu vertiheal which is a little bit uncommon because he already i mean the chiwu's biggest uh counters are the water striker and the vertiheal so he already has the two counter the two biggest counters to his comp so gets a strip on almost everything except for the fire art master just goes for skill two on the fire art master gets a giant net but that's going to proc josephine's passive also doesn't get the dark I say Dark Magician again. Doesn't get the Dark Mage. Uh, now he's just going to keep trying to control and control and control. But anytime that Dark Magician... Anytime the Dark Mage gets a turn, you're going to do some debuffs. Right? So let's see if they get the uh, glancing on the... Uh, the not, not the Chi. Uh, the, the, the glancing on the Vertiheal or glancings or speed breaks or whatever. So really, he just needs to try to turn cycle as much as possible. Wow, he did not get lucky with that uh, that monkey. So the monkey gets a speed break. Vertiheal uh, gets no glancing, no speed break or anything. And now he's just doing... Now he's, now he's got the, uh, the Shung Pung. So now he's just uh, Shung Punging the enemy. However, there is still more sustain on the Josephine side, right? Josephine still has her shields. They're, they're blocked right now. But uh, let's see. It's not looking great. But let's see. Does she have her passive? Well, then... This monkey's not doing anything. You guys see why I put despair on my light monkey? Because sometimes he just doesn't do anything. At least I, I want to give him an extra chance to do his uh, light monkey things, right? So counters, get the attack power break. Still has two strips, though. That's the thing. Still has two strips. So let's see how many debuffs. This burning heal's going crazy. Is Josephine going to just solo the whole match? Gets a few debuffs. Does he get it? He doesn't get a vomit proc. Okay. Guess that on the vertical does he, he's not gonna be able to kill with it. He didn't even stun with that. Didn't even stun. She gets element advantage all the time. So that's it's one v three now. It's one v three. Is is this dark dark mage <gasps> heals heals? The dark mage heals. I keep forgetting about that, but the dark mage heals. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what kind of debuffs uh, they can get on the enemies. But this dark <laughs> this dark mage is gonna one v three. Let's see it. Well, 1v2 now, but... <laughs> she was taking about uh, three and a half years to do his uh, his first skill. Typical Chiwu, right? So heals more based on the amount of uh, debuffs on the enemy team. So... Get some heals. And now it's just... Yeah, let's see it. I mean, this is, just, this is rune quality. This is like... This is why you grind your runes. This is why you try to make sure you R5 and grind over. Like, oh, that was a purple grind. I got to get a legend over that. I got to get a legend over that. I got to get a better grind. I got to get a better grind. I got to keep increasing towers, right? I mean, at this level of RTA, you should be, you should have basically max towers. If not very, very close to being maxed. 
Um, I know I said the last match was going to be the last match in the video. However, I found another nice match from the first person that we were taking a look at with the Ciara and the Lulu first picks. He goes in against a fast, aggressive control team. The interesting thing about the opponent's picks is usually you see the, far art, the Fire Art Master and the Water Ryu being picked first. He goes for the Oki first into a Gani Savannah, which is usually not the order that you see it picked in. He doesn't get all the strips with the Water... Let's see how many uh, debuffs he gets. And he gets another turn too. That's nice nerfs to the, uh, nice nerfs to the Savannah. But uh, yeah, he doesn't get all the strips with the, uh, the Water Ryu when he first did it. So, oh, now he gets another turn, dismounts the, uh, dismounts Savannah. He still gets the CC, right? So he still gets the, he, he didn't reset the Ganymede. We well, can't reset the Ganymede uh, skill too, right? So Ganymede skill two can still reset the Oki regardless. Because you can't, uh, same thing with uh, Jameer skill three. So, you know, Jameer would be a nice, uh, nice unit too in this, uh, in either of these teams. Jameer's a very, very good unit. I underestimated the amount of damage that Jameer's uh, skill 1 does. Pretty nasty. But anyway, all those controls though, all those con all, all, all the control skills really don't do much to her passive. Because she's, she's still going to do all of those uh, debuffs with her passive. Takes the Rika down. However, at this point, it's basically just game. There's so many, so many, there's two on one. And there's so many different debuffs, including a uh, defense break. And all of the and all the other five uh, debuffs in addition to that. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Just saw those Kiki matches. I was like, yo, you guys are going to love these Kiki matches. Because, again, she just came out. I can't believe that two of the people on the uh, favorites list. This is the Korea server favorites. This is the, the free-to-win account. Obviously, it's the free-to-win account, right? This is not how I do this dungeon on my main. But just thought I would uh, include it for you. Anytime I can stick Triple Mummy in a video... You know I'm going to stick Triple Mummy in a video. But anyway, that's it for this one. Just thought you guys would get a kick out of the Dark Magician. Dark Mage. Dark Mage. I'm going to stop saying Dark Magician. Thought you guys would get a kick out of it. That's it for this one. See you as always in the next one.